Okay, so we'll start with body relaxation before our meditation. So just take a minute and get into your posture. And allow any tension that might have gathered to release and relax. And if your mind feels heavy, you can bring a sense of pulling up through your spine, up through the crown of your head. And if you're feeling anxious or agitated, do the opposite and focus on your spine lower down through your tailbone to the earth. So just use your physical awareness to balance your mental experience. and gradually move your focus to the breath. And just be with the breath for a few minutes. and revive your motivation.
May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings not be separated from higher rebirth and the bliss of liberation. May all sentient beings abide in a state of equanimity, free from attachment and hatred, free from holding some close and others distant. Reviving love, compassion, joy and equanimity to yourself in your own words, making them alive. and shift to personal analysis. The far enemies of compassion are very obvious, things like anger and hatred. So right now, look at the near enemies of compassion, your own, those specific to you, that look like compassion, might even sound like compassion but you know in your heart are not. What forms do the near enemies of compassion take for you as an individual? And it can help to contrast how you are in your best form of compassion with when you start to stray. So your best form of compassion might be calm and creative, flexible and joyful, even while bearing witness to terrible suffering. Your mind has a lightness an openness and then creeps in the near enemy of compassion where that good heart becomes slightly agitated something like anxiety or impatience so just think about the contrast you when you know you're at your best form and when it starts to deviate.
Maybe it's as simple as when you shift from deep listening to listening with anticipation. Maybe it's like your vision goes from open to closed, wide to narrow. But just contrast your best form of compassion with those near enemies, hard to catch. Maybe your compassion starts to slip when you over-identify. And it turns into empathic distress. And your nervous system becomes upregulated. Your mind becomes agitated. You're feeling with, but too much involved with. Or maybe it's the opposite and you under identify and you pity and think, oh, I wish you were free of your suffering, but I could never find myself in such a state. I don't understand why people get into that pain or that disaster. So maybe your compassion slips when it goes into over identification or maybe it slips when it goes into under-identification. Exploring that. And maybe your near enemy of compassion isn't empathic distress and isn't pity. Maybe it's just distraction, trouble focusing, a battle with boredom, exploring that.
Or maybe your near compassion, your near enemy of compassion is something like prejudice, where your compassion flows very freely with people that you consider mine or us, but anyone outside that radius, you don't give as much accommodation. There's a harshness. Checking for that. And does your good compassionate heart get tainted by ideas of who is worthy of your compassion? Who deserves it? Do those mistakes infiltrate your good heart? And so whatever those near enemies of compassion are, consciously shift back and rebalance to the best form of compassion you have so far. And reinforce it with common logic, deep wisdom that understands all sentient beings don't want to suffer. Sometimes they understand the causes of suffering and sometimes they don't. Sometimes their strategies for avoiding suffering are healthy and effective and sometimes they're harmful and don't work. But regardless of their effectiveness, None of us want to suffer. Therefore, all of us deserve compassion. Because despite not wanting suffering, all of us suffer in some way. The person you love, the person you look up to, suffers and struggles. The person you dislike, the person you look down on, suffers. All the countless strangers suffer.
we intellectually know this very clearly, but experientially shut our eyes to it. And so think as genuinely and as deeply as you can. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they be free of the conditions for suffering. May they stop creating the causes for it. And when we meet suffering with compassion, we are healed and the potential is for them to be healed through us being a powerful condition, although never a cause. And so decide to hold the awareness of the infinite sufferings of sentient beings the specific sufferings we know about right now of human beings, war-torn parts of the world, places where there's natural disasters, all the disturbances, inner and outer, holding them all in our mind's eye, then send compassion, respond with compassion. Courageous enough and brave enough to hold it all without being sucked under into despair. Because the core of compassion knows that everyone has the potential to be free from that suffering. And that potential for freedom can never be destroyed. And so you can imagine filling up with compassion in the form of white light, compassion for yourself, kindness directed towards oneself, the deep self-compassion of renunciation. And then imagine becoming so filled with this light that it radiates out in all directions through the pores of your skin, infinite light rays, pure compassionate wisdom in all directions. And reinforcing that compassionate wisdom with the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum 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 
Om Mani Padme Hum. 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 All right, see you next time. <laughs>